Alan, I want to talk about the movie Candyland. And in particular, I want to talk about uh, this poster that arrived for Candyland, which is a film by John Swab, which has played many film festivals, uh, some horror film festivals, including uh, Fright Fest. Uh, says, we'll take care of you. A film by John Swab. And someone, uh, this woman is holding a crucifix that has a knife in it. Um, it is a horror film about, well, Alan, why don't you tell us the story? Because I always love when you uncomfortably tell the story of a film. Yeah. Yeah, the the audience loves it when I uncomfortably talk about it. Uh, I love Candy it. Land takes Alan, place. Alan. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, Candy Land takes that, place. Alan. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Candy Land takes place at a truck stop in the middle of nowhere. Uh, the truck stop has, uh, it's ba basically a truck stop slash brothel, as there are uh, four ladies uh, who, who work the evening, plus a, a dude. And, um, and uh, at some point, uh, as people are just living their lives, doing their jobs, uh, a family of uh, religious, a religious family stops through and dumps off basically one of the daughters. And in order for this daughter, uh, who has just known Christianity for her entire life, in order for her to stay in this truck stop safely, uh, she now has to learn to, to uh, do tricks, to be a lady of the evening. And... Um, and uh, let's just say that uh, as things are going along, uh, people start getting murdered. Uh, at first, it's the Johns, and then it uh, just progresses from there. And um, it's uh, it's basically what you call your classic exploitation film. It does have a celebrity, and that would be William Baldwin, who plays the sheriff, who uh, who keeps the place protected for for uh, in exchange for tricks from um, can't from young Levi. Um, so. Yeah, it's a nice little horror film. A uh, little, you know, a little bit of nudity, a lot of sex, a lot of violence. Also, there's um, the cast is good. I mean, you, you mm -hmm. mentioned um, uh, one of the Baldwin brothers there, um, but also uh, Guinevere Turner is in this, and I haven't seen her in a film in years. Also, uh, an, it, she's uh, been a screenwriter, Guinevere Turner. Look her up. Look her up. Yeah. Uh, I just noticed that. Yeah, I, I thought I recognized her. Yeah, this is a really good exploitation movie. It's um got a uh, got actually, and I'll share, uh, I'll stop screen and show for a second. Got a very good review on Film Threat. Um, mm -hmm. let me find I it. I believe it almost got a ten. It yeah no just like let me find it. Where is? I usually have a tab with film threat open. It's on our front page now. I mean, there's like, look, a lot of a lot of people also like just to know like film threat is a website. You can go to filmthreat.com and see what's on our homepage right now. These are, let's see, we got an indie film interview there, uh, a movie called Divorce Bait. I don't know what that is, but I, I often read my own website to find out what, what movies are coming out, right? Or to learn about short films I wouldn't know about. But Candyland's on our front page. It's on VOD. It uh, opened in theaters and d was reviewed by Michael Talbot Haynes and got a nine and a half out of 10. This is a masterclass in putting together uh, an exploitation horror film. Uh, goes very dark. The opening scene of the movie, and you know what I'm talking about, Alan, <laughs> yeah. is, I don't want to say it's graphic, but it's a shocking act of love taking place in the front cab of a truck uh, between a woman and a trucker consensual, but there's a, uh, there's uh, an exchange going on. In any case, um, very highly reviewed on the film threat website. Um, I really enjoyed it because it has all those elements of exploitation. It's also 90 minutes. You're in and out um, so to speak. And um, also it, it felt like a movie from a different era. Mm -hmm. Like it felt like this could have been made in the seventies, right? Like they didn't, they didn't lean into like everything about technology or whatever. And it was interesting how they used this sort of code, like a trucker will be coming to a truck stop and have like a secret code to like go to a channel to discuss terms. So they do use like, uh, they've got like, you know, Hey, CB radios, CB radios and whatnot. Yeah. Um, God, my dad had a CB radio when I was a kid, he thought it was fun to just listen in on like, police reports and weird stuff like that. Anyways, um, 
it's it's a really good solid exploitation movie but i just wonder like it got a very good review on film threat nine and a half okay i would recommend this movie i would say get it on vod definitely see it uh 90 minute runtime right there really good performances and by the way a gay character that's a that's not all about being like a not a gay stereotype just happens to be a character who's gay who you feel very sympathetic for right and alan i'm yeah i know no i'm just thinking about it because part i guess that there is a downside for me to the movie is it, it at the end when you know the, these things progress in terms of the killing and stuff it just right. felt like that that the killings were more it's just they were all done the same way and it was right. like you know I, that was my only real problem with it i, I you kind of want to vary things up a bit um you know and and i'll be honest i was surprised by who survived well let's not let's not even i know i won't that. say anything about that but uh it's like okay this is this is one way to end the movie yeah but look i, I i've always liked the exploitation film genre mm -hmm. um another one that i liked from a couple years ago uh was called roadhead um uh, it's actually it's actually a gay horror film or at least the all the characters in it are happen to be gay but uh it's it's more of a horror comedy mm -hmm. but i love i've always loved the exploitation genre um everything from like one of my favorites faster pussycat kill kill directed by russ meyer have you ever you've seen that alan i've not seen that one no you're kidding i've not you've not guess, seen I, well when it, yeah i mean i i just started like kind of getting into because i got the uh focus feature uh, i'm sorry the full moon Full moon subscription so i've been kind of going through those and russ oh, Myers right. once in a it, while in there also I think they the, pulled them, though. the full moon has an app where you get like one of the cool things about the full moon app is you get a lot of exploitation movies yeah not this one in particular but, but a lot of the euro expo exploitation a lot of the 70s exploitation yeah uh, and it's very exploitative <laughs> well a lot of those are italian uh yeah. exploitation movies so they're great because, but here's my concern. And this is my question to you. Something to think about. Can you make an exploitation movie today? I mean, this movie does and does it very well. And it's a little, it feels a bit like a time capsule, but it's set present day. But I wonder that a lot of the small indie movies that we cover are just not, uh, not in the awareness of say people who might object to a film like this. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, all the exploitation films we get, and we get a lot, is are, are at the indie level. Yeah. You know, and, and these guys raise their money, raise the money themselves. Um, you know, and, and you're seeing that diversity in terms of uh, gay exploitation, female-led exploitation. Um, but, I, I, you know, a big studio doing it, um, you know, I guess X would be the, the closest thing that, that we've seen lately to a truly high budget exploitation film yeah it's I, I just wonder though that because almost i feel like almost any scene from candyland you could take put in another movie and people would be complaining about it and what maybe maybe this is like a uh i don't know a silver lining is that a lot of these small indie movies kind of fly under the radar and it's my mm -hmm. whole argument of like well if hollywood is bad watch something else and that's that's why, you know, that's part of the reason that film threat exists is to point you in another direction and say, because, look, we also, to be clear, we get a lot of other a lot of indie movies that are not great that we don't talk about. Right. Um, yeah. Alan, that was a very knowing smile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there, there are times where I just have to tell a filmmaker, you know, we. Uh... We just couldn't get someone to like it. Well, some of the, well sometimes I'll talk to filmmakers that like ask yeah. me for advice and I'll have seen their movie and I'll just say, uh, you should just make another movie. Yeah. Don't even send yeah. this out for review. Yeah. Just go learn, learn lessons from this movie and make your next movie. Exactly. Exactly. So uh would you would you consider X exploitation? Yeah, yeah, for sure. X and Pearl. I think Pearl's the better movie, to be frankly, mm -hmm. to be honest. Like yeah. Just because that performance by Mia Goth is just crazy. But it's again, it's like a great performance in a horror film that no one's going to notice from mm -hmm. a, an award standpoint. So she's not going to get recognition that she really, truly deserves, which is disheartening.